Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is the first of our series on politics trading with regards to the upcoming US presidential election. My name is Pete Jones. I'm from Beth there, and we're very fortunate to be joined by a good mate of mine all the way from Philadelphia in the US. His name is Tavis Rendell. He is a full-time investor and political trader. Uh, Tavis, thanks very much for, uh, for joining us here. Thank you, Pete. Pleasure to be, with, be here with you this morning. So for all the viewers out there, why don't you start by um, sharing a little bit about your background and how you got into politics trading? I uh, studied politics my entire educational career in undergraduate and graduate school. I uh, lived and worked in Washington for 10 years. Upon graduation, I worked in the intelligence community as, a, as an analyst. And about four years ago, I decided to leave the field and pursue this full time and try to apply those skills of the analytical world to fi the financial and political world. I've been doing this for about four years. And uh, as you, your viewers may know out there, and 2016 was quite the year in American politics where we faced the mother of all upsets, certainly in our lifetimes. And given the current political climate in the US, I think 2020 certainly has the potential to be just as exciting from a handicapping, wagering, and a spectator's perspective. So hopefully it'll be right in line for your viewers like that. Absolutely. So four years ago, you happened to tip me into a couple of really good trading opportunities. One was Donald Trump when he was $26. Um, unfortunately, I traded out way before I uh, actually should, should have actually held the bet, obviously. Um, and uh, Paul Ryan was the other one that um, happened to tip me into Paul Ryan. At, uh, he was trading at $800 at one point, uh, shortened right up to 30 So I can 100% vouch that uh, you know, Tavis really knows his stuff. So, uh, so listen up, um, and I'm sure he's going to find plenty of really good betting opportunities. So, so the format of today, we're going to look at uh, four really big markets on the, on the exchange at the moment. Um, uh, they are the Republican nominee market, the Democrat, Democratic nominee, the Democrat vice president, and obviously the big one, the, the next president market. So why don't we go straight into it? Um, if I just share my screen here, will you just bear with me? Um, so here we are on the uh, Republican nominee market. So we, we've seen lots of um, market moves just in the last couple of days, actually, on Donald Trump. He's traded as short as a dollar and four to be the Republican nominee. Uh, just yesterday, when I was speaking to Tavis, he got out to a dollar and twelve, uh, and now he's back into a dollar and eight. So there's there's a lot going on there. But um, how do you see it? And do you see any scenario where Donald Trump isn't the Republican nominee going into November? Well, first off, Pete, thank you for the very kind introduction. If uh, with any luck, we'll hope to find a few of those valuable gems uh, that we can for you this year. I no promises on the. Uh, uh, 20 to one or a 80 to one long shot like that, but we'll certainly do our best. Right now we aren't, we do as uh, looking up at your screen for the Republican nominee, we, we don't have anything like that at the moment. Um, your viewers, if they're been following the uh, American political news closely, will see that uh, Donald Trump has encountered, even by his standards, quite a bit of scandal in the past week. News that a Russian bounty was placed on US troops in Afghanistan. The White House story on whether Trump was or was not briefed on the subject or even had knowledge of it and did nothing in response, uh, that story is beginning to gain legs by the day. So you'll see Trump probably has drifted about from $1.05 to $1.08, even as high as $1.11 yesterday. Uh, that has happened here on the American exchange as well. As for whether or not this is enough to knock him out of contention to be the Republican nominee, it's unlikely. Uh, in the past 48 hours, he's firmed up support from his own party. What we often see here in the States is the same story 15, 20, 25 times, where you'll, say it, where you'll often ask yourself in the media, is this the moment the Republican Party abandons Donald Trump? Until the is it equation- too late for that, Tavis? Sorry, buddy. Is it too late? No, it's okay. I challenge you to step up and, um, um, and, and, and challenge Trump and, and, and to gain that. Um, I don't know there were a few- um, unlikely challenges uh, from a few months ago uh, as part of the primaries that have since um, that have since withdrawn from the race. Um, is, is it too late for um, uh, someone to come in over the top and, um, and try and get that nomination? It's a great, great question, Pete. And under normal circumstances in the American political calendar, the answer would be yes. Uh, due to the spread of the coronavirus in the States, however, uh, both conventions, the Republican and Democratic convention have been delayed by about six weeks till the middle of August. So it's not too late, although it would have to happen soon. If the party did decide to abandon Trump or Trump decided for whatever reason not to run, it's unlikely, but 
could happen. Uh, he has faced an enormous deficit in national and swing state polls against Joe Biden. So this, at the moment, this does not look like a likely winnable race for Donald Trump. We are four months away, however, and about six weeks away from the moment where Donald Trump will formally accept the nomination of the Republican Party. If this is going to happen. It's going to happen in the next three weeks. Sure. Um, so if Donald Trump isn't the Republican nominee, um, who, who do you see as the likely um, successor, I guess? Um, uh, would, it, would it likely go to the Vice President uh, Mike Pence, or is, is it an outsider that you see as a uh, reasonable value there that can come in over the top? Those are the two, uh, the top ones on your screen, actually, Mike Pence and Nikki Haley would probably be the most likely. Um, I'll, start with the I'll start with Pence, who would be the emergency replacement. Mike Pence would not have the backing of the Republican Party uh, at large, I think, to be uh, or, or to be viewed as a winnable candidate, as a, win as, a nation, as a candidate that could win nationwide in the United States. I don't think he carries the same base of support as Trump and doesn't quite excite the Republican base as Trump would. If, if they turn to Mike Pence, it really is, it would have to happen in a three-week emergency window. And at 20 to one, I don't think that's worth your time or, or your money. I don't think that that's likely. If you get Pence at a higher price, if he drifts out to 30 or 35, you may want to consider it for a small investment for value, but not, a, not, not at the current price. Second one you mentioned is, and the more interesting topic here is Nikki Haley. She's often viewed as but perhaps too much by the national media here in the US as a certainty, near certainty for the Republican nomination in 2024. I think that's far from a certainty. I think you know, I, the, the, field, the Republican field in 2024 will be enormous by all, by all standards. And I do think she's a favorite, but I don't think, given the current climate in the US, which is really shaping up to be a pro-democratic year, a real democratic wave year, I'm not sure Nikki Haley would wanna jump in into the fray with about four months to go and no national campaign structure. She could inherit Trump's campaign, but I don't think she'd wanna take her shot now, even if 50 to one, Maybe if it gets higher, but I, I see that as unlikely as well. Sure. So, so you think that um, Nikki Haley would be more likely to run in 2024? And, uh, Very much so. Yeah, I, I think she, she almost certainly will. Yeah. And okay. would, not want to waste that, would not want to waste that opportunity now. Sure. Uh, one that's uh, actually attracted a little bit of interest is um, an interesting one. Uh, Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock. Um, do you, can you, like, I know uh, there's been a long list of actors turn politicians in the US and um, in, in a way it's you know one of the one of the only city countries where you know dreams like that can actually uh, you know, eventuate and take place but um, can you see any sure. <laughs> circumstance sure. where, where the rock would would actually put his hand up to uh, uh, to run for president I know he sort of uh, talked about it in the past but um, is, is that as far-fetched as what I think it might be this year it's it's far-fetched but I would say in four, or eight, four years or eight years, it's, it's not inconceivable. Uh, he has expressed an interest in politics before. Uh, and as you note, interesting news today here in the States, uh, Mark Cuban, another celebrity businessman uh, here in the United States, has flirted with an independent run for president or even a Republican run for president. Uh, he took himself out of the running today. So you will not get another celebrity added to the race, it looks like, anytime soon. In the future, I could see Dwayne The Rock Johnson running running as a candidate, probably not as a Republican though. I think given sure. given his background is, and his expressed political views in the past, he would most likely run as a Democrat or an Independent. Yeah. I do I could see him running for president in within the decade, just not as a Republican. I know he has been a little bit vocal recently. He hasn't um, uh, actually named Donald Trump, but he has been critical about the lack of leadership in the U.S. Um, um, Absolutely. The, the current situation with the, the Black Lives Matter movement and the um, and the coronavirus, obviously. But um, uh, so just for the viewers out there, this is actually being recorded on the second of July. Um, so if you happen to be uh, tuning in in a couple of weeks and rocks into the rocks into even money, then uh, you know disregard what we what we just said there. We we might even have to pull this from the uh, from the internet. But um, if the rock, if the rock is running by then, we will do an emergency show. I promise. <laughs> exactly. Um, so any any. Are you there any trading opportunities or is this is this a leave for you is there um uh would you be looking at backing or laying trump at the moment or do you think his, his price is about right right here i would actually just keep keep it simple i would wait for trump's price to drift out with the continuing scandal it may get up to a dollar 11 maybe even a dollar 12 on this particular market and i would just back trump at that point 
Another way to get around that would be, as I mentioned, to lay, lay Nikki Haley around 80, or if you can get it for around 60. That's pretty much, and this, again, this is a, this is a market that will resolve in less than six weeks. So yeah. I would, uh, I would I'd do, I'd do a lay bet on Nikki Haley right there, and I would wait to back Trump, if you can, anything over $1.10, you're getting good value for your, for your market right there. Sure. Um, moving on to the Democratic nominee market. Um, so Biden is trading it as, as short as what he, what he has been, a dollar and four. Um, firstly, how, how did you go with the, uh, the Democratic primaries? And um, uh, was, was Biden a winner for you uh, so far with, you, with your trading? Or, um, is it, he was, is he was but regretfully not as profitable as it, it should have been. I, I sold out a little too early for profit. Not that there's anything wrong with taking a profit when you can, but I I knew Joe Biden would generate momentum after his win in South Carolina. I just did not anticipate the, the size of his victory after that. So uh, I was on the right side of the trade, which is always good, just not, not as much as I should have been. Sure. Um, so the second favorite here is, a, is another interesting one, Hillary Clinton. Um, can, can you see any scenario where Hillary Clinton uh, becomes the, the Democratic nominee? You know, Pete, this is, this is a really interesting one for me. Uh, on the American exchange as well, Hillary Clinton continues to attract not just long shot support, but even as, you know, at, at times as, as touch as close as 10 to 1 here in the United States. And I don't know what's propping that price up. Uh, I still don't. Uh, it's consistently a second favorite to Joe Biden for the Democratic nominee. I, I think the market's rationale, whoever is betting that, must believe that the D that the Democratic National Committee would turn to Hillary as an emergency replacement. If, if a health crisis were to befall Joe Biden or anything like that, I still think that's unlikely. Even if they were to have to replace Joe Biden, I highly doubt that the National Party turning to Hillary Clinton as a replacement. So sure. that right there at 38 is, is a lay. Uh, I, I just couldn't see it. And we'll move, we'll move on in your next market. We'll touch upon who could be Joe Biden's replacement as a potential vice presidential candidate. Uh, right here would, be, it would just be a no on Hillary Clinton. Sure. Um, so here it is. Here's the vice presidential candidate market. Um, as you can see, uh, Kamala Harris is, uh, is now into uh, odds on. $1.97 is the best price that you can um, uh, achieve on her. So, so Joe Biden came out months ago and, um, and, and basically told... Uh, the nation that um, he would be electing a female as his running mate. Um, there has since been speculation that um, it would be a, a woman of colour. Um, so we've since seen a lot of uh, moves in the market, the moves in the market for Kamala Harris, Susan Rice, Bell Demings, um, and other runners, other candidates in the market have, have drifted. Um, where, where do you see the value here? On this particular market, I, I think your value are more in your in your dark horses and your long shots. I think at the top, Kamala Harris and Susan Rice is the first and second favorites. I, I think that's just about right. Uh, I would I think Harris is around even money. I think that's a fair price. I think she's the deserved favorite. Maybe it's a, it might be a little thin, but for now that that would, I would leave that one alone. Susan Rice at seven point six. That's maybe worth consideration if you can get that above eight. I think she. Joe Biden, had, not only would she be a woman of color, if Biden is committed to going that route, we'll discuss that a little bit later in your show. She would be a good pick for Joe Biden, I think, simply because he stated that he's looking not just for a political calculation, but someone with whom he's comfortable. Sure. Susan Rice. He's, he's uh, previously worked uh, quite closely with Susan Rice as well. He did, and that, and that could be critical going forward. Uh, he's, he's, if your viewers do, are unfamiliar, she's Barack Obama's former national security advisor. So Biden has worked with her for going well back over a decade. Uh, she is not an established seasoned politician on the national level. That's the one drawback. Uh, she does not have any experience running for, running for elected office. So she would be jumping into the fray in the middle of a nationwide race. The one reason why she could get away with that is because, again, we are living in an environment here where you're not doing rallies, you're not doing media appearances because of the virus. So she may not be subject to that kind of daily scrutiny apart from video, video rallies, fundraisers, and calls. Uh, you, could, you can avoid that kind of scrutiny, uh, certainly by the daily amount of scrutiny this year than you, than you could other years in the, in the U.S., sure. which is obviously a unique election year. Sure. 